Hello everyone. So today we're going to discuss about interrupt initiated input output or we can simply call it as interrupt cycle. Okay. So first, what is an interrupt? So open communication only when some data has to be passed. The I/O interface instead of CPU monitors the I/O device. When the interface finds that the I/O device is ready for data transfer, it generates an interrupt request to the CPU. Okay. So what exactly uh, is this? When the a interface when the interface finds that the iwo device is ready for data transfer it generates an interrupt request to the cpu okay so upon detecting an interrupt so when the interface finds that iwo device is ready for tra data transfer so whenever your iwo device is ready uh, for transferring the data it generates an interrupt request to the cpu so what does cpu do upon detecting an interrupt the cpu uh, stops monetarily the task it is doing branches to the service routine to process the data okay and then returns the task it was performing so uh, whenever what is an interrupt so interrupt is nothing but uh, an error so let us assume an error so abruptly it stops uh, so uh, what exactly happens when an interrupt is occurring so upon detecting an interrupt what does cpu do cpu stops monetarily the task it is doing branches to the service routine so uh, it branches it jumps to the service routine to process the data transfer okay and then returns to the task it was performing so uh, how uh, it knows that an interrupt is occurred so we have an interrupt flip flop okay so interrupt enabled flip flop we call it as ien okay so that will be set to 1 so whenever ien is set to 1 it means that an interrupt has occurred so uh, can be set and cleared by the instruction so whenever the interrupt is solved so we can uh, change ien to 0 so remember when i when ien equal to 1 an interrupt is occurred and when ien equal to 0 the interrupt is cleared so we can set as well as we can clear the instructions so when clear the computer cannot be interrupted so when ien is 0 a computer cannot be interrupted so uh, this is the flowchart for interrupt cycle. So here R decides so whether it uh, for, uh, whether it follows an instruction cycle or interrupt cycle. Okay, so here R equal to interrupt flip flop. So uh, as we know that uh, flip flop holds only uh, two values. Okay, so uh, here R if it is zero, we go to instruction cycle. So what is instruction cycle? As we know that it contains fetch decode so fetch decode execute store okay so it's a cyclic process so fetch to decode decode to execute execute to store so after storing again we can fetch okay so fetch decode execute so it's a cyclic process so uh, when we go for an in, uh, instruction cycle when r equal to 0 an instruction cycle is enabled so first what we will do fetch and decode the instructions okay there uh, interrupt enable flag will be zero okay so when interrupt enable flag equal to zero that means uh, no interrupt has occurred so uh, after fetching executing the instructions so during this process it which it will check for ien flag when ien equal to zero that means no interrupt okay so whenever ien is set to one now it will check for the flag input okay so flag input is set to 1 that means r tends to 1 so r tends to 1 is nothing but your interrupt okay so flag in uh, flag input will be enabled when when ien equal to 1 so when ien equal to 1 it means that your interrupt and en uh, interrupt enable uh, flag is set to 1 that means an interrupt will be occurred interrupt occurred so that uh, your flag input will be set to 1 so when uh, once the flag input is set to 1 your r will be changed to 1 so once your r will be changed to 1 it's nothing but an interrupt cycle it goes to interrupt cycle okay so uh, at that case if fj equal to 0 that means your flag input is 0 then it checks for flag output so if a flag output is 0 that means there is no interrupt your instruction cycle is successful even though when flag, uh, flag output is 1 again r is set to 1 again uh, it goes to interrupt cycle okay so uh, in this first case itself if r equal to 1 directly we go to interrupt cycle so uh, what does it do uh, it store return address in location 0 so uh, your current address location will always be stored in uh, program counter pc so pc always tends to mc uh, m of 0 that is uh, store return address in location 0 and branch to location pc is set to 
1 okay so in uh, so pc initially it is 0 so pc pc always increments to 1 right so pc set to 1 now in enable to 0 okay uh, and r is enable to 0 so once interrupt is solved uh, again in is unable to 0 what does it mean if in is unable to 0 that means there is no interrupt so what what does it mean if r, r tends to 0 it's nothing but uh, it goes to instruction cycle. So again, the instruction cycle will uh, keep on uh, processing. They dispatch the instruction, decode the instruction, store the instruction, and execute the instruction. So during this process, if any uh, inst uh, interrupt occurs, then uh, instruction cycle will be stopped. The interrupt cycle will come into picture. One, uh, once the interrupt uh, is solved, then again it goes to instruction cycle. Okay. So the interrupt cycle is a hardware implementation of a branch and save return address operation. So what is branch? So branch is nothing but jumping so to particular location. What is save return address operation? So uh, so saving the return address. Okay. So once we go to that location and uh, coming back to the uh, original location where we started. So at the beginning of the next instruction cycle, the instruction that is read from memory is in address one. Okay. At memory address one, the programmer must store a uh, branch instruction that sends the control to an interrupt service routine. So uh, here we have an interrupt service routine. So this interrupt service routine um, at the memory address one, the program one must store a branch instruction that sends the control. So it sends the control to the interrupt service routine. The instruction that return the control to the original program is indirect BUN. Okay, so what is BUN? So BUN stands for branch in unconditional. So branch unconditional. Okay. So uh, this you can see here uh, before interrupt and after interrupt cycle. Okay, so it starts at zero location uh, and at the first memory location that means uh, PC is at one. Mm, so zero BUN 1120. So a main program and 255. So PC points to the 256. Okay, at 110 IO program. And uh, so there is uh, uh, this is before interrupt. So what happens when after interrupt cycle? So uh, zero at location uh, it's 256. Okay, so PC equal to 1, 0, BUN, 1, 1, G, 0. So PC, uh, reach the transmission of interrupt cycle, your uh, R flip-flop, whenever it is set to 1, that is if IEN, that is FGI plus FGO, so it takes T0 dash, T1 dash, T2 dash. So time cycle T0 dash, T1 dash and T2 dash. Okay, so uh, FGI plus FGO. The fetch and decode phase of the instruction cycle must be modified. Okay, so it, it, it will be replaced with that means R T0, T1, T2 will be replaced with R dash T0, R1, T1 and R, uh, R dash, sorry, R dash T1 and R dash T2. So uh, what happens at R T D uh, R T naught? So uh, PC tends to TR and DR uh, address register is set to 0. So PC tends to uh, uh, TR and R T1, uh, what happens here? Uh, PC is set to 0, okay? And the TR tends to M of your memory address of address uh, register and R T2, PC should get incremented to 1 okay that means IEN will be 0 and R tends to 0 and sequence counter will be set to 0 okay so PC uh, increments so, so once PC gets incremented your uh, interrupt enable flag will be set to 0 and uh, R will be set to 0 so 1 R will be set to 0 which is nothing but it uh, again goes to instruction cycle so you can clearly observe from the above diagram uh, so uh, uh, at what stage the interrupt has occurred so you can clearly see at the 0th location at 256 so why because pc is currently pointed to 256 uh, interrupt has occurred over there so once interrupt is solved again it, uh, the actual process will happen okay uh, so how the cpu recognize the device requesting an interrupt since different devices are likely to require different interrupt service routines so how can cpu obtain the starting address of the appropriate routine in each case should any device be allowed to interrupt the CPU while another interrupt is being serviced? How can the situation be handled when two or more interrupt requests occur simultaneously? So these are the questions uh, you may get in your examination. So uh, how can the CPU recognize the device requesting an interrupt? Uh, okay, uh, should any device be allowed to interrupt the CPU while another interrupt is being serviced? So whenever one interrupt is being uh, serviced uh, by uh, interrupt service routine, so should uh, any device um, allows the another interrupt uh, the CPU? So, our uh, next one, how can the situation be handled when two or more interrupts requests occur simultaneously? So, uh, these are the questions on uh, internet. Okay. Uh, so, uh, this is the complete computer description, uh, description flowchart of operations. Uh, 
so when r equal to 0 is instruction cycle okay when r equal to 1 it's interrupt cycle so what i happening in instruction cycle okay so in instruction cycle your pc tends to ar and r dash t not in r dash t1 uh, pc pc incre uh, pc increments to 1 uh, m of ar to ir instruction register and r dash t2 uh, we know that uh, i bit there is 15 bit is into i and 0 to 11 is address register and decode why because fetch decode and execute operations will be performed okay and when interrupt cycle uh, your pc tends to uh, tr and ar address register is set to 0 okay so pc is set to 0 and tr tends to m of ar so pc uh, gets incremented to 1 then your en will be set to 0 and r is set to 0 and sequence counter is set to 0 so from there uh, it goes to uh, D7, when D7 equal to 0, it is memory reference instruction. When D7 equal to 1, it is register or IO reference instructions. So, uh, from there itself, uh, we can check when I equal to 0, that is register reference, or I equal to 1, it is IO reference. Uh, in coming to memory reference, when I equal to 0, this is direct addressing. When I equal to 1, it is indirect addressing. So, in this way, uh, with this flowchart, we can clearly say that all the instruction cycle, interrupt cycle, at the same time, register or IO reference or memory reference instructions are covered in a single flowchart. So I hope you understood the video. Uh, if you have any doubts, please uh, put in the, uh, please put the in the comment section. Okay, so I will clear all your doubts. So um, the students who are watching my channel for the first time, I request you to please subscribe my channel and uh, uh, please sh share my videos to your friends who are studying in other different colleges so that you and your friends will get benefited. And please support my channel in all possible ways. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.